top 10 times Amber Heard claimed the defamation trial was rigged. Hi, I'm your host Bridget Shields and let's get into today's video. Number 10, The Appeal. Elaine Bredhoft told NBC's Savannah Guthrie that she will absolutely be appealing the verdict reached in the defamation trial. Quote, we even had to try to get the UK judgment in to dismiss this case because he already has his shot. She also goes on to speak about the evidence that supposedly did not come in. It turns out she was serious as within a month of the verdict in Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's defamation lawsuit, Heard's legal team has officially begun the appeal process. In a lengthy filing in Virginia court on Friday, the actress's legal team is seeking to throw out the June verdict in the high profile defamation lawsuit by arguing that the ruling had a number of issues, including poor legal reasoning, an improperly vetted jury, and excessively awarded damages. Bredhoft also insisted that Heard's medical records were suppressed and that a number of things were allowed in court that should not have been allowed in, which caused the jury to be confused. But even if the appeal is unsuccessful, it's clear that Heard believes the trial was totally rigged. Number 9. Insufficient Evidence Heard's attorneys have brought forth a 43-page memorandum which asks for the verdict in Johnny Depp's libel case to be tossed on the grounds of insufficient evidence, and with it a more than $10 million award. The main reason? Well, Heard's team argued that it was false for Depp to claim that he lost his role in Pirates of the Caribbean film series all because of her op-ed she wrote in the Washington Post, citing the fact that Depp didn't provide evidence that the op-ed was the reason he lost the role in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. The lengthy document claims that there were articles noting he wouldn't be in the sixth film more than two months before Heard's essay was published, and that because Depp was never officially contracted to do a sixth film, he cannot claim damages for a film he was never contracted to do, insisting that the film was already in development without him on board before Heard's essay was even published. Number 8. Juror 15 Heard also claims that one of the jurors who served during the trial was not properly vetted, saying that there were problems with their credibility. The filing points to Juror 15 as proof, arguing that there appears to be a 25 year discrepancy between their birthday on court records and other identity documents. They urged the court to investigate whether Juror 15 properly served on the jury because their listed birth year was 1945. And according to her attorneys, the juror was clearly born later than 1945. In fact, publicly available information demonstrates that he appears to have been born in 1970. The motion goes on to say, quote, this discrepancy raises the question of whether or not Juror 15 actually received a summons for jury duty and was properly vetted by the court to serve on the jury, basically claiming that the jury selection was rigged because of the massive age discrepancy. Heard's legal team are hoping this alleged discrepancy can raise questions over the suitability of the jury panel as a whole. The filing also alleges that Juror 15 may be an entirely different person than who they say they are, which would completely compromise the due process of the trial. Number 7. Flawed Legal Logic In court documents that were filed for Heard's appeal, Elaine Bredhoft said that the case rests on flawed legal logic, arguing that instead of proving how the op-ed negatively affected Depp's claims, they were based solely on defamation by implication theory, abandoning any claims that Heard's statements were actually false. The attorney also argued that Depp's legal team said it would focus on the period after the op-ed came out, but instead widened to encompass events and statements from way back in 2016. The filing argues that instead of proving Heard hurt his career with her 2018 essay, which is why he sued her for defamation, he was instead trying to disprove the initial 2016 domestic violence allegations, which were not up for judgement. Heard's team also claims that Depp didn't actually prove that he suffered that much financial hardship because of the op-ed. In fact, they claimed that it was very unlikely the actor would have appeared in Pirates of the Caribbean 6 after all, because he himself said he wouldn't have taken the role for a million alpacas. Number 6. Lack of Motive This one is really interesting. Another reason Heard's team is filing the appeal is because they claim she actually believes her own allegations. That's right, her team is arguing that what actually matters here is whether or not Heard believes that she's a real victim of domestic violence. They are saying that if she believes her own allegations, a jury can't find that she acted with malice, and that she would have written the op-ed without any bad intentions. The court documents insist that Depp's legal team never actually proved she didn't believe her own claims. In the appeal, the text says, quote, the jury's verdict was obviously influenced by Mr. Depp's pleas in the face of the court's preclusion of Mrs. Heard's introduction of evidence that Mr. Depp had, in fact, already been tried in the court of his choice for committing 12 acts of domestic violence. So basically her team is trying to write off the verdict by saying that Heard did not have malicious intent by writing the op-ed. Number 5. 
excessive damages. As a part of the appeal filed by Amber Heard's legal team, they insist that the damages awarded to her ex-husband are far too high considering the verdict. The lengthy document goes on to read, quote, The jury's compensatory and punitive damage award were excessive as a matter of law, and added that Depp only deserved to receive reputational damages, insinuating that the damages awarded to him were blown way out of proportion. If you don't know, the two parties were found to have defamed each other in June, but the jury ruled largely in Depp's favor, awarding him $15 million in damages, while Heard was only awarded $2 million. The judge later lessened the punitive damages to $350,000, citing limits set by state law. Following the trial, Heard's lawyer said in June that the actor wouldn't be able to pay the monetary penalty awarded to Depp, but Judge Penny told Heard's attorney that if she wanted to appeal the verdict, she would have to put up an $8.35 million bond with an annual 6% interest. Representatives for Heard have said that she does not have the money to pay Depp or meet the bond, so not sure how that's going to happen. Number 4. Discrediting Witnesses Following her lawyer, Elaine Bredhoft, Heard in fact claimed that the actor paid the witnesses brought by him for their testimonies. In a shocking clip released by NBC, Savannah Guthrie asked the actress about the various reasons that the jury might have had for not believing her. 36-year-old Texas native said, quote, They had sat in those seats and heard over three weeks of non-stop, relentless testimony from paid employees. And towards the end of the trial, randos, as I say. That's right, she literally called the witnesses for Johnny Depp randoms, and many people believe she was even talking about British model Kate Moss. She later also stated that the jurors did not believe her claims, as the three and a half weeks of testimonies by Johnny Depp's attorneys was an attempt to portray her as a non-credible person. In fact, the Aquaman actress added that she thought the testimonies from Depp's witnesses conditioned the jury not to believe one word that came out of her mouth. Number 3. Therapist Notes Much has been made of the therapist notes that Heard claims would prove Depp physically attacked her. Quote, There's a binder worth of years of notes dating back to 2011 from the very beginning of my relationship that were taken by my doctor. After those notes were examined, it was revealed that on one page, the therapist wrote that Heard claimed Depp had hit her and threw her on the floor. Another note eight months later said that Depp had ripped her nightgown and threw her on the bed. She told Guthrie that the notes represented years and years of real-time explanations of what was going on. Even Bredhoft claimed that her client's medical records were suppressed, which she says were very significant because they showed a pattern going all the way back to 2012 of her reporting the domestic violence to her therapist. But if it was so significant, why wasn't it counted? Well, Judge Penny had ruled the notes as hearsay and refused to allow the evidence into the trial, which does make total sense. Number 2. New Text Evidence Heard also took issue with texts that weren't allowed into the trial. She actually claimed that the text messages she sent to friends and family during her relationship with Deb are evidence of the domestic violence that she suffered during their marriage. In one message, Heard claims she sent her father in 2014, she wrote that Deb kicked her in front of everyone during a private flight. In fact, that very incident was a subject of testimony in the couple's defamation trial as well. And another in 2015 read, quote, Johnny did a number on me tonight. I'm safe and I'm with my support tonight, but I need some real help. Can I come tomorrow? I called earlier because I thought I had a concussion and I didn't know if I should have called police. By exposing the text messages during her NBC interview, it's clear that she believes this new line of evidence is going to somehow muddy the waters of the case, even though she knows that it wasn't actually allowed in the trial. And number one, discrediting audio tapes. The audio recordings played during Depp's testimony show her admitting to starting a a physical fight between them and downplaying his reaction to the incident. When speaking on NBC with Savannah Guthrie, Heard claimed that the audio tapes were edited. Quote, what you would hear in those clips are not evidence of what was happening. But when Guthrie said that Heard admitted to starting fights on recorded audio, she said, quote, I know how much has been made of these audio tapes. They were first leaked online after being edited. What you would hear in those clips are not evidence of what was happening. Claiming that the 20 second clips are not representative of the two or three hour conversation they came from. But when Guthrie asked her why she hadn't submitted the full recordings, she just said, I'm not a lawyer. Well, now she is really trying to discredit those tapes and insinuate that the trial was rigged. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know if there's anything we missed. Be sure to like and subscribe.